CEE Central Europe Explained An IDM podcast series powered by Erste Group CEE Special Edition Youth in Academia Passive Listeners or Actors for Change As student, engagement is a key driver of one's personal development. But what does engagement mean? Well, following the European STEP project, there is no single definition of student engagement. From critical reflections to political activism, it works on different levels, national, institutional and individual. It also differs from country to country and institution to institution. Being engaged leads to meeting new people and gathering new experiences, skills and competences. It is recognized as a key part of university studies, especially if it's valued as practical experience beyond in-class discussion. Often, one can feel challenged by finding the right balance between engaging in activism and one's academic studies. But why are social engagement, activism and academia often perceived as separate spheres? Are they maybe not supposed to work hand in hand? Welcome to CEE, Central Europe Explained, Special Edition. I'm Emma Onteberry, Research Associate and Podcast Producer for the IDM. I'm here today with my colleague, Gloria. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Emma. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for being here. Yeah, maybe you can start by saying a few words about yourself. Sure. Well, my name is Gloria Becerril. I am collaborating at the moment with IDM as a trainee, as part of the Erasmus Traineeship Program, which is part of my master's degree in local development in the University of Padova in Italy. So, Gloria, today we're here to talk about using academia, are they passive listener or actors for change and discuss about engagement? What does it mean? As you might have heard it already in our introduction. Uh, yeah, maybe you want to keep on going with this topic. I find it myself very interesting since right now I'm also studying and I think that engaging into what you're doing, it's key in order to have a successful path eventually as a professional. So we can wonder if engagement is recognized enough by institutions. Are universities in Europe actually fostering youth participation? How do students feel? How can they grow into actors for change instead of passive listeners? Actually, there is a European quality survey led in 2016, which gathered some data which are very interesting, especially the volunteering rate in the 18 to 24 age group, and I'm quoting here, has increased to 38% and that of university students to 48% compared to 2011. So this means that more than 9 million out of 19.5 million university students in Europe have already experienced volunteering, end of quoting here, which is quite interesting because it's actually a huge amount of, of people and goes against this whole idea that university students are passive listeners. That's great news, to be honest. That's something really nice to hear, since I think that's something that we really need right now. If we are not engaged, then we're probably not going to do our job correctly. So it's interesting to note that despite these rising numbers also, some institutions tend to neglect, misunderstand, or even fail to recognize and value active students' participation. Following on this point, there is the European Student Engagement Project or European STEP that has conducting research on the issue and also constitutes a strong base for understanding the importance of participation in students' lives. So European STEP consists of a study to emphasize the importance of youth engagement and its recognition in students' academic path. The project aims to contribute to the recognition of student engagement in Europe in particular as a factor in the development of key and cross-curricular skills complementary to the academic path. Well, let me tell you something super interesting, Emma. In July 2022, the Danube's Rector's Conference Summer School on the Future of Academia in the Danube region took place in Vienna. 
and we had the chance to talk with actors from academia about their views on student engagement. Exactly, and especially we welcomed around 20 participants from all over Europe, also some expert speakers and guest lecturers. Together they discussed the challenges regarding the future of academia in the region. But in today's podcast, you will hear personal opinions and narratives from some of them. For instance, Daria Benic, student at the University of Bari al Modomoro in Italy, Romina Kali, lawyer researcher in the field of transitional justice in Skoda, Albania, Tiame Mushi, assistant lecturer and student counseling coordinator at the University College Pabaresia in Albania, and Kerkeje Skojani, student in psychology at the University of Pristina, Kosovo. They came together to discuss on what is student engagement and the role of youth in academia, passive listener or an actor for change. At the same time, we conducted some anonymous interviews gathering ideas among the participants, so do not be surprised if you hear unknown voices. But to start with, let's listen about actors of the academia. What are their thoughts regarding current engagement in class? Why do they think it is important? What do you think about current student engagement in class? So I think in general it varies highly from country to country, especially across the Danube region, because in some parts, in the really developed countries, you already are implementing some of these solutions, whereas in the others you still have to do the bureaucracy on paper, you still have to go to the secretariat in person, and so on and so forth. So up until these discrepancies between the countries or even between the regions themselves, they are not solved. I, I don't think you could have like a unitary way of doing it in the Danube region. I'm Daria Benic from Montenegro, studying in Bari, Italy. We should have the opportunity to contribute in a meaningful way to the dialogue and conversation with colleagues and professors, because the idea of thinking together reflects the notion of active and constructive engagement. Well, indeed, I think engagement is kind of a seed, right? The seed of the development of everything. So I would say engagement provides a space to develop one's critical spirit, reflect and experiment. As for me, maybe, maybe the quality is about whether the student is active or not. Maybe it's not even about knowledge, but it's about the skills and the understanding and the ability to implement those knowledge into something. What the participants said about implementing skills. On the one hand, engagement is complementary to studies because it allows the development of transferable skills useful for academic and professional life. I am Romina Kali from Škodra, Albania. As an uh, experienced researcher, I would say that academia is one of the most influential and contributive fields of the society. So Romina just said here that academia is one of the most influential and contributed field of society. Following this point, and on the other hand of what you just said before Gloria, engagement is actually a way to confront oneself with others, the world, and to foster active citizenship. Students must participate inside and outside the classroom and especially engage in and out the academic field. Today, based on my work with youth, I strongly believe that young people are the biggest drivers of change in our societies. It is crucial for them to accept that uh, they will face challenges and obstacles in their path, but um, it is very important for them to be decisive and persistent when they embark on this journey. This is essential since they represent the future of the society and it is crucial for them to contribute and to have their voice heard in decision-making processes. They should be the ones to criticize their societies to be analytical and supportive to other young people as well. I am Tame Moshi. Universities should keep in mind that young people are projectors of the future and for this they need participatory and comprehensive university procedures for students and recent graduates. Honestly, Emma, I love the way how they have emphasized on the importance of youth and students, and as well, universities. Universities and schools are important tools for society. They play a transitionary step to adult life, bringing students into a specific field and connecting them with peers. Indeed, higher education institutions' role is more than just broadening academic knowledge. 
It is about engaging citizens and contributing to the life of the community. Exactly, and institutions are thus role models which must guide and preserve democratic, fair and truthful values. Here, let's listen to what Kerkesia says. I am Kerkesia Azoyani from the University of Pristina. As a future psychologist who has ambitions to become a part of academia, I find the journey towards it quite difficult. During this journey, students need to be exposed to and mentored by researchers who protect the highest values of the university, although this is not always the case. Plagiarism, fabrication and cheating are types of academic dishonesty that can make professors models that should not be followed and students, not just passive listeners, but active imitators as well. When those who teach fail to maintain the integrity of the university and no one holds them accountable, unethical behavior can be quickly normalized for their students. As a consequence, they don't learn how to think in a critical way, how to challenge others and be good researchers that initiate change. Despite this, I encourage students to break these vicious cycles if they are part of them, and to make their priority the search for truth. This statement actually just confirmed what I just said previously. Higher education institutions represent citizen factories. In fact, they transmit much more than academic knowledge to students. They are also there to train engaged citizens that contribute to the life of the community. Through engagement, students experiment while getting involved in projects and trying to solve structural challenges. I totally agree. And in order to follow this theoretical aspect, we ask academic students and staff about how they perceive themselves when it comes to engagement. As students, we find ourselves influenced by many factors because we come from different family backgrounds with diverse educational history and employment experiences. This obviously impacts our personal development and confidence to be active participants or to be passive listeners. In my case, I unfortunately consider myself a mere listener, given the fact that I'm surrounded by hundreds of students and not so many professors try to engage with us as much as they could. It seems like they just want to present information as facts and there is not enough space for us to discuss and share our opinions. Therefore, uh, students sometimes feel inferior and think they don't have anything valuable to say or are afraid to do so. In my daily work with students for the student office that I coordinate, there is enthusiasm for participating in various forms of activities that our college organizes. Less is the enthusiasm for participating in student conferences or collaborating with the academic staff to participate in research. In this aspect, the responsibility falls on the universities to use the appropriate mechanisms to encourage participation and critical thinking. More than that, we also wondered about the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic on the possible silencing of students. Social engagement as well as in-class participation have been put aside there. Also, digital format do not really give much place to debate and to think critically. Students can feel demotivated, which makes it harder to process ideas and reflect on different perspectives. On top of that, all of the classroom activities were completely put aside during the pandemic. As for me, from my experience, it increased dramatically. In comparison to in-person learning, where a teacher uh, can see the students sitting at the class, he can ask questions and students are more or less active. Via Zoom, a lot of teachers don't even ask to turn on your camera. And so students simply sit during the lectures. And what lecture is, it's when teachers simply present some information. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's, it will be logical to assume that no one is actually listening. And when sometimes he would ask any questions, actually maybe a one or two of them will answer them. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I was in this role and I was feeling like, okay, I have to rescue all my group because it is too obvious that no one is listening. Nobody is listening. That's quite a statement. I wonder what do educational institutions have to say about it? I think that's the challenge now. 
and for both research reports and common reflection led during the DRC Summer School 2022, it is clearly mentioned, in order to foster youth participation, we need more recognition of student engagement. Completely. And again, the European STEP report especially highlights the need of legitimating, encouraging and promoting engagement from the academic side. Engagement possibilities must be made more visible and the institution must make it possible for the student to engage. Indeed, engagement and participation must be feasible for student life, especially time-wise, so that one can find capacities to do so. For instance, making student engagement part of the curriculum could be a fair and appropriate solution. Here, let's listen to what this participant suggested. It's actually quite interesting. So in terms of uh, learning, you could engage students through participatory structures as where they have the decision taking in a decentralized manner in the university and where they partake and have uh, assumed roles of management. But also you could engage them on a more personal level through like individualized feedback, particularized uh, one-to-one lesson courses or like for the improvement of their own abilities and skills uh, tied to the to the market or also you should um, engage them through the use of digital technologies so they can have access remotely they can make their own schedule they can have like uh, follow through the courses on their own time and so on and so forth so it appears that it's all about engagement and fostering engagement which appears in a plurality of forms in diverse contexts and scales. We cannot say that there is one single recipe to foster participation, but some factors must be understood by higher education institutions, such as making engagement feasible capacity-wise, better recognition and a flatter hierarchy when it comes to decision-making within universities. Following this point, Shalini Randeria, president and rector of the Central European University, gives her views on what are universities here for when it comes to youth participation and engagement. We want to educate students who are strongly interested in pursuing um, research, um, pursuing academic uh, careers, but also pursuing careers outside of uh, academia so that they should take the knowledge which uh, universities have been able to impart to them to whatever uh, professional uh, field uh, that they choose. Um, So I don't think we train students only for academia. Very, very few of our students in any university will finally end up in the academic uh, profession. It can absorb only a very limited number uh, of uh, people. So I think it's important to train uh, students to use the knowledge um, that they have gained in every other professional field uh, in which uh, they will be uh, active. At the undergraduate level, I think it's important to train students to be engaged citizens, committed to the values of democracy, open society, Um, and the rule of uh, law, of human rights, of um, justice, uh, solidarity, empathy, Mm -hmm. not just uh, abstract legal values, but also uh, to cultivate um, values of solidarity, empathy, uh, which I think are uh, important uh, for them as uh, engaged citizens when they are in their own societies where they will be called upon to protect the uh, fragile institutions of liberal democracy that either have been built or are being built, which are unfortunately all under attack in many parts of the world. So. The students can't just live in an ivory tower uh, of academia, uh, even the ones who are then later on in academic professions, they will have to engage with the world. So we must engage with the world and youth is shaping the future and education shapes the youth, their values and habits. In this sense, Students must get used to engaging in the world and thinking critically. 
But this cross-disciplinary and cross-level reflection must also be fostered. Indeed, this is the only way to strengthen exchange among both students themselves, also between students and teacher, and bring the necessary skills for coping with the current challenges. Well, I think this has given us a lot of material to reflect on, don't you think, Emma? Definitely, and also ideas to act with in a certain way as we are also both students is very important to foster our engagement, I believe. I think fostering the students' engagement as academic institutions, but also ourselves as students, right? Completely. And actually, we can keep on talking about this for hours to try to find solution and active, concrete ways of acting. But I think we should end this episode now, right? I think so. So thank you for having me, Emma. It was really nice talking to you. Welcome. That was super nice to be here with you today. And thank you for everybody. We'll be in touch very soon. And please, if you have ideas and feedback, don't hesitate to write us. Thank you so much. And until the next one. So you enjoyed this podcast? Then tune into another CEE episode and subscribe to the IDM podcast series on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Acast, or elsewhere you get your podcast. And also have a look at the rest of our work on our website www.idm.at for any feedback or podcast collaboration feel free to contact me at e.honchaberry at idm.at. The email is in the description below. This was CEE, Central Europe Explained, a podcast series produced by the Institute for the Danube Region and Central Europe, powered by Erste Group. With the ongoing participation of Daniela Paiden, Marvin Atalik, Daniel Martinek, and Sebastian Schaeffer. Production and editing, Emma Hunterberry. Proofreading, Jack Gill. IDM Podcast. Institut für den Donauraum und Mitteleuropa. Institute for the Danube Region and Central Europe. European Perspectives. Regional Actions. Cooperation and Expertise since 1953.